After my reaction and vocal analysis to the studio and live versions of Addo's Unravel, many of you asked me to go through TK's Unravel, particularly the first take performance. I haven't seen this. I'm super excited to see what he does with his song. Oh, yeah, nice. Super interesting, having just come off of Addo's performance, hearing a male voice doing these same things. Extremely different timbres, yet the emotive quality of his voice is not diminished at all by what I've heard Addo do. <laughs> It's really nice having the lyrics in contrast to <laughs> the other songs sung in a different language. It's neat to be able to watch those. Also, a comment about how he is blending this airy head voice with a higher chest voice. Notice he's he's not reaching to any notes. He's unapologetically moving between these two registers in not only an artistic way, not because he has to, but because he wants to, but also he's capitalizing on the fact that his voice works better in different resonances over different notes. So breathy overall, though. That's hard to do and maintain breath support. He's doing both. Oh. Listen to the different timbres. Like you might just say, oh, well, yeah, he's singing louder and belting here. No, well, that's only part of the story. Listen here. Notice how many breaths he's taking. To keep that, that like airflow dump sound happening. And then there's intentional full, pure, good closure as he brings in the support. You have to have a very good understanding of how your support system works in order to go from that breathy sound and knowing when to breathe and not running out of breath to this really engaged sound that he has going into this next part. If you don't understand how your support is supposed to work as a singer yourself, you're never going to be able to dial in this level of energy and contrast in your voice. If you'd like help dialing in your support and the foundations of great singing, click the link below and join my free course. It's Listen to the difference in vocal weight 
right? He is totally fine to be really mousy and quiet up there. And not just quiet, but small. And then grounding in these much more powerful, engaged, some are mixed, some are chest voice notes. I've done lots of videos on this channel about all the different sounds he's making. I encourage you to check them out. I've left links in the description to some of these other videos. He is going between so many different coordinations and resonances to cover this wide range. It's ab it's absolutely incredible. He's so strategic about switching registers. And I think a lot of people, when they're singing, can't decide which register to use. And so there's this uncomfortableness. Do I, do I reach for that note? Do I sing it in, in, in head voice? Or This takes a lot of planning and knowing your voice, knowing where your voice is strong, knowing where you want to intentionally back off to capitalize on where it's weak. And I don't use weak as a negative uh, word there. I use it as a a color, right? We have strong and weak, and he knows exactly when, based on his own voice and his own strengths, when to invoke each character, each use case. <laughs> There's a perfect example, right? He's singing in the same area, and he doesn't need to go into head voice there for that section and then go into chest voice. But he's dialing in this contrast in the same area of his voice. This makes it feel more natural when he goes super high and small and, super, and bigger and lower. If he was just going into head voice when he needed it, it would feel awkward, but it does not. <laughs> Right there. Ah. Love that breathy. Let's talk about this posture of his voice right here. <laughs> when I imitate it, it almost sounds like I'm joking or I'm I'm not taking it seriously and. Actually, that's exactly what we need to do when we're imitating some of these postures, is not take ourselves too seriously. If he was trying to hit those notes up there like this, and it's super weighty and not as, as cryy of a sound, crying, and this sort of whine sound is a great way to access your mixed voice, which is what he's doing, and a great way to expand your range. So he's got la 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 la, a darker sound, and he's got this sound, and he's got this sound. Ha ha! All of these things slammed together and used strategically gives him a tremendous color palette to choose from with his voice. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I was hoping it would happen similar to that based on what Ado did. Let's hear that a few more times. While maintaining that head voice engagement, let's talk about his approach to this scream. It's slightly different, but related to what Ado did. Okay, we hear a pitch basis here, a, a much more pronounced pitch basis than what he's doing. If you know what to listen for, listen again. Right? Those are pitches he's used in this song so far, but he's putting something 
over it and singing through his voice in a way that's pretty cool and unique. Listen to that. Unraveling the world. Listen to those pitches there. Listen again. It's there. This is not a, a an arbitrary unraveling the world, which was a little bit more what Addo did and what a lot of people, including myself, would just unravel and do. Unraveling the world! Sigh into it. Put the support in, make it happen, like I talk about on Addo's video. Here, though, we've combined a sensitive pitch consciousness, unraveling the world! with this sigh, broken voice approach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think those pitches, unraveling the world, and then on the tail end of each of those pitches, I'm going to sort of sigh out of, or at the same time, I'm thinking those pitches. Unraveling, unraveling. You hear my voice quivering and breaking up? I'm, that's good. That's good. I want to lean into that. Unraveling, unraveling. Unraveling the world! Unraveling the world! You still hear that? Da, da, unraveling the world! It's, this is, you'll hear guys like Chester Bennington do this in a masterful way. He's doing it in a masterful way. Like I said, it's a related technique. We still have this sigh sort of thing happening. But we're thinking pitch relationships and abandonment out of pitches while we're still thinking the pitch. This takes a lot of coordination and a lot of practice. But try it. Try try getting these notes in a nice, nice mixed coordination like he's doing. Unraveling the world! And then let each note start to fall apart as you think about the note and give it more support. Unraveling! Unraveling the world! and embrace all the different e eeks and nuances and chirps and cracks. Embrace those. Don't shy. Don't go. Mm. Don't shy away from them. Continue to lean in with passion and abandonment and you'll get this eventually. And then he follows up with that wonderful whisper singing. <laughs> What an awesome contrast. cry and sigh in his voice. This is really important because he's singing, he's singing very high and passionately, but he's not plowing. You don't see him straining. You don't see him merely going for these notes. There's this sense that he's thinking on top of these notes and then abandoning out of each one. This is why he gets into that scream so much so well earlier. But we have this sense that, listen to this last section here, especially. He both sighs in and out of that note. As opposed to, right? That right there, that posture that I just did breeds like competition with my own voice. And it sounds strained. Whereas if I ease in by sighing in and then ease out by sighing out, there's this float that my voice has. His voice has float. Every great voice has float. And sighing in and out of notes and phrases can help you with that. There it is 
again. Oh, wow. oh, so fun. My I can't get over his choice of placements for that whisper engagement. It's it's just perfectly placed. What a perfect relationship this version, Ado's studio version, and Ado's live version have with each other. They each offer a, a very distinct perspective on this wonderful melody. Seeing this one gave me even more respect for Ado's live approach. She took this melody and created this desperation out of it. And then listening to TK in this particular version in context, even though this was done first, I feel like I can understand and relate to why Addo chose to make her studio and live recordings and performances of this song. What an incredible song. Range. I love the natural instruments, the rawness of this performance. Thank you. Thank you for requesting this. Keep requesting stuff. And again, if you'd like more help with your own voice, being free, exploratory, and non-judgmental with how you approach your singing, click that link below and join my free course. We'll see you for more.